Good evening. This is Edward Nan, and we are doing a, a live podcast here on Sunday evening. Kind of last minute, but then that's oftentimes how the word comes. We're <clears throat> going to talk about layers of reality. And we've spoke about this subject in many different ways over the years, about reality, about what you see, what you don't see, about the layers that overlap, and the fact that you literally can be dealing with two or three different scenarios operating the same space-time continuum at the same time and, of course, we have no idea because we are still learning our way as spiritual beings and how much we are impacting and being impacted by what is going on in the Father's kingdom. We're becoming the Father. We're becoming Christ. And that means a whole lot more than you know, some religious concept of the Christ in me salutes the Christ in you and, and you know, everything that we've attached to that. Father, we bless this word tonight. I draw your anointing. And Father, it's time to peel back the veil. It's time that we see a little more clearly what is transpiring right in front of us that we have not had eyes to see. We thank you, Lord, for the light that you're bringing. We thank you, Lord, for the light that you're infusing within us. We know the infusion of the light has not come at a light cost because we have had to die out that the Lord might come forth within us. And that is not a trite saying. It's not something that we just talk about it like revelation, which we've done over the years when we were in Christianity, in more of the mainstream religion mode. This has a reality to it that we are really only now beginning to experience uh, on deeper and deeper levels. You know, what it means to die out and to give yourself and to let go and to become the light, even as your Father is the Father of lights. And all of that is so much more involved than just a light experience, a light acceptance or determination. It is transformational at the very least. A metamorphosis, like the word says. A metamorphosis. Do we realize how much we are in a state of metamorphosis right now? Metamorphosis. To change from one order into an entirely different order more than just being transformed. It involves transformation into the Lord, into the Father. But it's a metamorphosis out of which comes a race of people, as we have said, that have never walked the face of the earth, the chosen royal priesthood of God, a new order. Behold, I will do something new. Will you be aware because we're becoming something new. And the price that God has enacted upon us has been total and complete. And we're still struggling with that and working through that. But the out result of what's happening is God is creating something new. And he is changing us, metamorphosis, 
into a new creation. Will it be human? Will it be angelic? What is it? We know that Christ is the firstborn of many brethren. Of what order of creation is the Lord Jesus Christ? I have no idea. I couldn't even think about that one. I, I don't even know what we're becoming. But I can say this, we're becoming something new. Something the world, the spirit world, has never seen before. A whole new thing that God is doing. Do we see ourselves that way? We spoke about this in the Word recently, about visualizing, about seeing yourself as God sees you. What he says is true. So we, what are we going to visualize? Whatever you said, Lord, that's how I see it. But this, of course, goes beyond that. Because how do you visualize something that's never been here before? You can't say, oh, I'm going to visualize myself as an angel, as an as a elemental spirit, as any numbers, you know, of, of, of things, I guess. But all of it is so far short to such a degree that the angels long to understand what is going on here. They look in awe at something so deeply mystical that is happening as the infusion of the Father's light permeates every energetic part of our essence and something is emerging out of that that the spirit world has never seen. The aliens, at least those that are friendly, have never seen. We have a flocking of, of various energies and different orders of creation that are coming around during this time that are looking to see what is this new thing that is coming forth and we sense it and we feel it and we see this light emerging. What is, what, what is this? Like we said before, some time back, three young people I would call them. They would appear to be in their 20s, I guess. They came from a distant, a distant location. Could have been a planet, could have been a dimension, uh, but a different place. And they saw from afar a bright light beginning to shine in the heavens that they had never seen before. And they sought out that light to see what this might be that was emerging. And, of course, those were the three that appeared to us some time back and began to talk to us about how their world was the structure of their culture, their society. I wouldn't even know what to call it. But it was all around the level of light that was manifesting uh, through different ones as they matured. And their leaders were those that emitted the greatest light. And we know there's only one source of the light. It's the Father. They're not out there scrounging around looking for a light bulb. <laughs> I know I'm being facetious. Or looking for some source through which they can, you know, uh, radiate out of this, this mystical energy. 
No, it's the Father. He is the light. And so you have civilizations that um, are coming forth that are structured around the emergence of the light. So anyway, that was something that came, you probably recall we've spoken of it before. But something's happening. Something's happening here. And when, and I wish that we were more aware of what is taking place rather than getting caught up into what our eyes are seeing and our emotions are reading and then dealing with that as some level of truth or reality. And it becomes very much a challenge. And I've said before that reality is relative because there are layers. You know, in my father's house are many dwelling places. You know, the King James says many mansions. That's kind of odd. But many dwelling places. The English language cannot capture or define or accentuate what is being spoken by the Spirit. It's very difficult. God says one thing and it takes you a book to try and, you know, nail it down. This is what he said. <laughs> it's, you know, it's very, very in-depth, very complex. But we know that there are layers of reality from that which is in the Father's presence to various layers uh, that are less in the Father's house. Um, and they're all being affected because they're all interacting. They're all part of, of, of the one. And, you know, so we have been admonished many times, be careful not to judge by what your eyes see, what your emotions feel, what you hear, because most likely you're only seeing in part, like the word says. You see in part, you know in part, but when the fullness comes, then you will see, and then you will know, even as you are already known. We said that before too. We are known, but maybe not fully, because the spirit world is still looking on, trying to understand this great thing that is happening. And yet people are so caught up with religion and having God on their terms and, and and they just miss it by a million miles. You know, God in a box on the street corner. Here's God in a box. Well, God's a Lutheran. He's a Protestant. He's this, he's that. God is all things to all men, but he's not limited. People are limited because they're not really open to walk into the fullness, to walk into the days of the kingdom, to walk into the deep things of God, to pay the price, to live not their lives unto death, to cast their crowns before the Father. People are not ready for that. They are not ready. Will they be ready at some point? I don't know. It depends. When we left old order, 
which has really become old order, even though in its day it was still not, it was still kind of working on cutting edge, but they were quickly going the wrong direction. And the Lord took us out and said, and I didn't understand. I didn't have any big revelation that all of this was, you know, going in reverse. It's, you know, everything is, you know, going slow. It's, this is not pleasing. I didn't have that. I was dumb as, dumb as dumb could be. And the Lord said, I am taking you out. And I'm going to bring you into things that the church world are not prepared for. And to this day, the church world is not prepared. And so they stagnate with all their doctrines, with all their insecurities, with, with who knows, so much. But that, that is their path. But there is a remnant whom the Lord has called personally and said, I will choose you. I choose you. I choose you to walk with me in white. But it comes down to the people individually making the choice. Yea, Lord, I choose to be chosen. It's not a slam dunk. Just because God may call you doesn't mean it's a gravy train ride after that. It's anything but that as it tests your metal to see what you're made of, to see do you really want what God has for you. Do you really want it? Because it involves a metamorphosis. God lays you on the surgery table. He brings out the scalpel. <laughs> and he says, okay, we're going to get rid of this. We're going to get rid of this. And he starts removing. But he doesn't remove just to remove. He removes that something of him is replaced. But that which is replaced involves more than just a slight change. It involves a transformation, a metamorphosis, something that begins to create you anew. And most people, that's just asking too much. And so they walk away, or they don't even start that journey. So all of this is an introduction to what we want to talk about tonight. Although I think this is something that the Lord really wanted to address. But my concern has to do with just equipping the saints a little bit more for what is coming. As it is, everyone has a lot of homework that they're working on in the demands of God upon their life, in the things he has set before them to do and to reach in and to believe for. But on a flip side, we need to cultivate a greater awareness. And sometimes it just takes a step of visualizing, seeing yourself in a whole new light, in a whole new position of awareness, sensitivity, clarity. You don't even have to be specific. But see yourself coming up higher, your eyes opening and everything becoming just more clear. So 
we haven't really followed a lot of the hype of what's going on right now. But there's a great deal of hype. There's a great deal of misinformation, a great deal of deception that's flowing in the earth, more so than there has ever been. <clears throat> a lot of uh, that which is set to create fear and oppression. And so we've watched it where it began two, three years ago with the COVID-19 and all of the misinformation and all of the, the garbage that was being generated and very little exposing of the real working of evil behind closed doors in creating the very things that, you know, uh, that needed to exist to create this platform of, of darkness and deception. And so COVID-19 ha has grown in uh, its consequences, its dynamics with people, the manipulating of the DNA, and uh, really causing uh, changes that are very wide uh, spread. Um, but I knew that something else was going to come. Uh, I saw that a year and a half ago, that there's another wave of something that was, was coming, and it would be worse than this first one. And this may or may not be it. But the whole focus of the monkeypox uh, thing, when it first began to come out, it was being downplayed as um, really not that serious. It's kind of a mild case of flu or whatever they called it. I didn't really spend a lot of time, nor did Ann. Uh, it's just, it, we just thought, you know, just another one of these things that they're creating to uh, try and um, get it to get real traction within the population and spread. <clears throat> Anne's kept more in the loop of, of some of the dynamics uh, that are happening. Um, and the um, tenacity uh, with which this monkeypox thing is growing and uh, is expected to grow. Uh, but it's being designed to do just that. It's not a circumstantial thing that, you know, all of a sudden something crops up and you, you've got this random occurrence and it's very lethal and so you're kind of dealing with it. Um, this is by no means random. In fact, you know, this is exactly what Satan's plan has been, one part of many parts of his plan to create a situation that begins to take out humanity as we've known it. So, given that, what I want to just briefly talk about is the need to really function as a seer a prophet at this point in time. Uh, the seer prophet ministry is not something that is unique, let's say, to the church age where um, uh, you know, there's someone that has this gift of uh, of seeing, and so they, you know, they they see things that other people do not see. The fact remains that when I spoke about layers of reality, you may be dealing with something on this level, you know, the level of the consciousness, and you could say, well, this is a um, an illness, or a virus, or whatever, and you can put it in a test tube, and you can isolate it and say, see, there it is. Um, and so you determine, okay, that's what we're dealing with. 
So you go about looking for a solution uh, based on dealing with uh, what you have perceived existing on this plane of reality. But as it you know, is, layer overlaps layer overlaps layer. Take a step back. And what are you dealing with? And if you look real close, you'll find something different is actually unfolding. And it's having a manifestation as this uh, physical symptom. But indeed, what is happening is, a, is more of a spiritual reality. It is something that has been created in the spirit, and that's where its uh, basis uh, is. And to be more specific, uh, we saw this many years ago, and we were reflecting on it this evening because it made more sense now than it did then, not that it didn't make sense then. But the Lord, at, at that point, we were involved with some, some aspects of, the, of the, the restaurant industry. And so we, we had an exposure to, you know, a lot of the elements of creating food, making food, uh, people involved, you know, how, how it all just would work and would flow. And um, based upon where the cafe would be located, you could find a different energy entirely. You could take a, well, I don't want to, you could take a restaurant and put it in one city and then take the same restaurant, duplicate it, and put it in another city. And you'll find that it's completely different between cities because of the prevailing spirit world that governs each given city and has its own unique manifestation uh, through the people and businesses of that community. Now, whether that's hard for you to believe or not, I, you know, I don't know, but it, it remains to be that um, the world that we know is very much governed and controlled by the spirit world. And each um, aspect manifests the traits uh, of that governing spirit. So you might go into some town and you just feel such a heaviness or a sleepiness because it's part of the spirit that is uh, controlling that area. If you drive into Detroit, there is a principality and spirit of murder that is over that city. Uh, and you will find it affecting the people, the way they think, the businesses that are there, all affected by that that spirit that governs that area. So you can go from an experience at a restaurant in a location that is free and relatively, and so you feel uh, that that blessing or one that goes to an area that is really oppressed and you feel the oppression. And the problem is when you get up to leave, you walk out the door carrying that same oppression. And then it just takes you a while or anyone a while to, to dump that because they have not necessarily realized what just happened you know, what they walked out the door with. And so, as spiritual sons and daughters, we are affected 
by everything in the realm of spirit. And it's in more and more uh, important that we understand what we're dealing with and that we rightly discern what we're dealing with so that we're not drawing conclusions um, and yet we're not walking with our heads in the sand unaware, you know, that there are these elements that control uh, areas and cities, countries and states. They're all controlled by prevailing, you know, spiritual energies. So I, I, there's a... <laughs> There's a, there's a purpose here where I'm going, so hang with me. I know we're rambling a little bit. But what, we, what Anne saw with this evolving situation with the monkeypox is that it is far more transmissible than the regular COVID-19. That there are traits about it that can quickly be disseminated from one to another. Uh, you know, by touch, by contact, things like that, but also by another element that is not visible. And that has to do with the invisible spirit world. And so where we're dealing with the monkeypox uh, situation, uh, we're dealing with something that is primarily man-made, um, and that is way beyond the understanding of any of these brilliant scientists that are concocting and creating these uh, scenarios. And there'll be more and there'll be more as time continues on. And nobody, nobody has a clue of what they're really dealing with. Or, or, or the, the long-term uh, results because they're not merely messing around with the natural plane. With how things are evolving, they're really messing around with the whole realm of spirit and the realm of the soul and what they're injecting into it. And so, you know, you could say, well... So, what's the problem with COVID? It is more transmissible than COVID-19 and more so even in just what is being conveyed through the energy uh, of the food that you eat and or the contacts and bonds of the relationships that you maintain. I think that's why we're, we're looking at something that's going to be a lot greater of a headache than we realize. And those that are behind the creating of these diseases and others that will come, they really have no clue. They do not know what they're doing. They think they know what they're doing and they're driving for a certain end that they perceive is going to happen when they're able to you know, interject a, a real weak uh, Achilles heel into a situation. But they don't realize that they're playing with fire. And the fire that they're playing is the, has to do with the entities that are being created and put into the foods that we eat. Uh, and, you know, of course, it's transmissible through relationships that we have. But let's just talk for a minute about what we eat. You know, a lot of people bless the food and they give thanks. But, and, and, and it certainly works on a certain level. You know, it's good to give thanks. Uh, but unless you really know what you're looking to achieve, uh, just speaking a blessing on the food, isn't going to get get you too far down the road. Because really what needs to happen 
with everything that you eat or bring into your house. If you go grocery shopping and you come home, the first thing you need to do is bless the food. Take dominion over the food because it will come home with entities, with elements of uncleanness that have been imparted to the food uh, by the farmers or by the handlers at various levels or by the chefs that cook the food. And, and we've seen this a number of times, and that becomes a real concern, is that all of a sudden someone's serving up a, a great dish of food, looks just great, but if your eyes were open, you would see it crawling with bugs and filth or entities. And that is very much a reality. But these things don't exist on this reality level. They exist a notch or two or three above. So you don't see it. Unless you're really sensitive, you don't even feel it. You, you don't know until oftentimes after you've had dinner or eaten and then you just know that something didn't feel right. And you go away really unaware that you just ingested a, a scorpion, a snake. Who knows? Spiritual forces of evil. Entities that um, are here for one purpose. To oppress and restrain uh, the sons of God as they come forth. So this really is an area of, of grave concern that we've had. We've seen this unfolding for the last nine or ten years. It doesn't mean that it's only been happening the last nine or ten years. It's been going, this is part of the reality of the spirit world. You know, God has brought us to a different world. A world that does not measure the same way that we measure the natural plane. It doesn't function along the same uh, the rules, uh, everything is different. The principles are different that govern it. The, uh, the substance and reality is different than the natural plane. And so we have to get out of this realm of the natural and realize that God has brought us to a world and a realm of spirit, the Father's kingdom. And as such, the reality of spirit far overshadows what reality exists on the natural plane. Things are not as they appear. How many times the Lord has said that? Things are not as they appear. No, no, no. They are not as they appear. But you need to see. You need to see. Otherwise, you're going to be subject to the oppression and to the defilement that snakes right along with what you're eating or what you might be involved with. Um, and that's just how it is. So when you go to bring food home, first thing you should do is you should certainly give thanks, but then move in and take dominion and command a blessing and command a cleanness that just washes it in the presence of God and just clean everything off, take dominion because what we're eating is becoming more infused with oppression by virtue of those who prepare the food to those who grow it, to those who market it. All of that is being touched by various orders and levels in the Father's kingdom. And the greatest way to transmit Monkeypox or COVID-19 is going to shift, probably already has, to that which exists in the spirit. And someone says, well, I'm wearing a mask. Well, that's really a joke. It's not going to, doesn't do anything for you anyway. I got a mask on. I got a cape on. You can put anything on that you, you want to but it's not going to resolve the fact that you're dealing with a level of reality beyond what you're aware of that is not limited to the human confines of space and location that can freely move like the wind. 
and can touch you and impart that essence of uncleanness to you. And that's, that's where our concern is this evening. This is ramping up. We need to be aware. We need to function as prophets and seers, and we need to be aware that we're dealing with a realm and world of spirit that we do not recognize that well with our eyes yet. But the whole natural plane is the least of our concern. It is at such a base level that if we just realized it more than we do, we would be able to control the natural plane like nobody's business, literally, because our levels of reality are on a different plane. But we, we're still making that transition. We're still locked into our thinking of, oh, well, this is real, this is tangible. Oh, I'm limited, so, well, yeah, I guess I'm limited. Oh, I don't have any money in my pocket. Well, you need some money in your pocket? Just command it to be so. You need a, You need something? Well, do what the Lord did. He just goes, picks up a fish, opens the fish's mouth. Here's a coin. There you go. Well, how did that happen? Because God does not function from the limited plane of the soul and the natural. Nor are we to. We still salivate to stimuli that, like a, you know, Pavlov's dog when it's not true and it's not reality not ours it can be everyone else out there in the world but it's not ours and we make a determination I will not allow that illusion that darkness that deception to take up its abode within me only the truth only the light And I'm not just going to run down the road and, and go grab a hamburger at a, at a hamburger joint, you know, and, and just end up eating God knows what. So it's very interesting. It reminds me of a book I read years ago when we were having a few appearings of leprechauns. So we were curious to learn more about leprechauns. And I happened to across a book. It was very interesting because it really bore witness. And the leprechaun was speaking with um, the person that was living out in the country there at the, uh, the little dwelling place. And um, so to, as, as it goes, the, the food was put on the table. And um, the leprechaun was there. The person was there. He, they could see the leprechaun. And um, so the leprechaun decided he was going to eat first. So he just hovered over the um, food or stood next to it, whatever he did. And he just drew in. And the person was watching like, what are you doing? And he just drew in. And then he opened it and said, okay, I, that was good, I'm done. And so the individual didn't understand, says, okay, give me that, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and have my dinner now. And, and the leprechaun said, what are you going to do that? Are you going to eat that? Well, that's dead. I consumed the energy of all that food, and it was great, but all the energy has gone. There's nothing there but just dead food. But the individual had no idea, wouldn't have known the difference. He was just going to sit down and eat that dead food. <laughs> anyway, short little story on that one, but I found it very interesting because everything about the Father's kingdom is energy. And, you know, positive energy, negative energy, whatever. But forces are coming more and more into play in the world now. Things are going to affect people more than ever before. Food is going to affect people more and more. And not just because we have a, a starvation that is being created and fostered 
by the spirits of darkness, but because there are many other dynamics coming in to play and is going to affect people on how they eat, what they what they eat, whether what they eat is even going to help them at all. Um, it's not going to be directly related to just how much quantity of food they can get. But a whole different set of dynamics are coming into play. And as sons of God, we just need to be aware of what's happening, what's unfolding, and make sure that we really clean off anything before we partake of it. And make sure that we really watch the contacts and bonds with people. Because the more you become the light, as you've probably already noticed, the more people are going to come and suck off of you. Because within you, dwells the light and the life. And out there in the world is darkness and death. And people will not even understand what they're doing. But they'll come and they'll just suck. But you, you could confront them and they wouldn't even understand it because they don't, they, they're clueless. People are clueless. These scientists are so brazen and arrogant. They're as dumb as dumb can be. Just because they have a certain level of knowledge of certain principles that govern uh, the realm of, uh, you know, the natural, it doesn't mean nothing. They're dead to the Father. They're dead to the realm of spirit and to the kingdom. So they're not even on, they're not even at home plate yet to even understand what is happening. They're just dead down here dealing with everything and manipulating everything on the natural plane, thinking, boy, we really got it. We really know what we're doing, and we're doing all this. And they are absolutely clueless. But the spirit, the sons of God, it's a different thing. You're called for clarity, for open vision, to really be able to discern and to know. And it's from that position of sight and knowledge that the authority of Jesus Christ will operate through you effectively. Without that, the authority is hindered. But with that, the authority has free course. So I bless this word to everyone tonight. And bless it to Anne and I. As we meditate upon this word, it's a new day. Things are changing. They're changing much more rapidly. And things, like I said, are not as they appear. Anne and I send our blessings to everyone this evening. Amen.